Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the regular monthly meeting of the Board of Commissioners held for the purpose of transacting the general business of the township. Today's date is February 8th, 2023. The meeting is being held in the Springfield Township building is also being offered on a live streaming feature. Brandon, how many did you say we have live? 13 online, so welcome, thank you. The meeting, uh, excuse me, the comments will not be accepted remotely during the meeting, but instructions for submitting public comment in advance of tonight's meeting were provided as part of the agenda. Uh, Mr. Taylor, if you could summarize any public comment received prior to tonight's meeting. Sure, we received four public comments from uh, the website prior to the closing of the feature at 5 p.m. this evening. All four address community policing, oversight over the police department, or public engagement efforts by our police department. Thank you. This time, please stand and join the Board of Commissioners in a moment of silent reflection to honor the service men and women who place themselves in harm's way in order to help preserve our safety at home and overseas. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This time I would entertain a motion dispensing with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting as written and recorded in the official minute book of the township. So moved. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. Any comments or questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a 5-0 vote. Well, we have five of our commissioners here this evening. Uh, Commissioner Graham uh, was not able to join us and Commissioner Maxwell uh, is also not here. Um, I'd like to announce that the Board of Commissioners conducted an executive session as part of the, the February 6th, 2023 workshop meeting to discuss one existing and two potential litigation matters. We also had an executive session just prior to this business meeting regarding a litigation matter. At this time, the board is now open to comments or questions from the public. The board draws particular attention to those items listed on the agenda this evening. Please be advised that once the committee accept questions from the floor. At the conclusion of the committee reports, public comments will once again be accepted. However, official action on those issues listed on the agenda will have already taken place. Therefore, if you wish to comment on an agenda item, now would be the appropriate time. And if you do come to the mic, please start with your name and address. One at a time, please. We don't want any fights. <laughs> okay. No rush. All right. Well, we had a lot of public comment last month, so it, 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 uh, it averages out. Okay, all right, at this time, the public comment uh, portion is closed and we will get into the committee reports. So we will start with me as the chairman of the public safety committee. And tonight uh, I have no report. So we will move on to the chairman of the community development committee, Commissioner Baird Standish. Thank you, Mr. President. And because Commissioner Maxwell is not here, I will also, if it's okay with you, uh, read his items, which are number seven, eight, and nine on the agenda. Sounds great. Okay, great. All right. So uh, starting off, uh, concerns the planning commission, I move the board of commissioners reappoint James Mascaro and Gerald Quill to new four-year terms of service as members of the Springfield Township Planning Commission. The new terms of service shall expire on February 16th, 2027. And that is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a 5-0 vote. Thank you. Next, uh, this is uh, resolution number 1594 concerning a land development at 910 Willow Grove Avenue. 
I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1594, a resolution granting preliminary final land development approval for the redevelopment of the property located at 910 Willow Grove Avenue in Winmore. The project shall include the demolition and removal of all existing building and site improvements together with the construction of a new three-story 16,575 square foot mixed-use building to include 5,000 square feet of medical office space on the first floor and six residential units on the second and third floors. And that is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. President, I do have a, a comment. Um, uh, uh, my, my review of this plan, which I will admit was, um, you know, fairly narrow and really centered on the, um, uh, the site's ability to make an improvement in our, you know, ongoing and constant Springfield problem of, of uh, excess water accumulation. It, it did not appear to me as if the developer was making any attempt to, to um, try and mitigate uh, any, any, any storm water that was currently, uh, uh, you know, running off uh, this site into the, uh, into the public system. Um, I, I think that I think that I understand that this was that they are uh, uh, proposing to build a much smaller build a, a little bit smaller building coverage uh, overall uh, for the site, but I still I still think that that uh, it, it warrants uh, you know greater attention to this very important issue in in uh, in Springfield about. Uh, water and 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 uh, water leaving, how water leaves a site, uh, you know, at, at what rate and condition. So, um, I, I think, and I would encourage my fellow board members to postpone this this vote, and uh, until we have a much better understanding of exactly what they are they are proposing, um, with regard uh, to the the water conditions and the water runoff from the site. You want to stay there for a little Yeah. But well, uh, Peter, I uh, recognize yeah. your concerns, yeah. um, but you're up against the 90 day plan review period. Okay. So you either need to deny the plan outright tonight um, or approve it, or it'll be a deemed approval. Or if you can encourage the applicant to grant an extension of time, um, you could do so. But you need to take action this evening. Otherwise, it's a deemed approval. Mm -hmm then would I make another resolution or, or? Well, you have to, there has to be a, a I'll refer to Mr. Dowdy, a reason to deny the plan. If, if my reason to- on our agenda, I, I would assume that our township engineer has said that it complies with our ordinances, albeit maybe not enough uh, in, in Pete's opinion. Um, but uh, unless, we have a guarantee, which we don't have, that the applicant will grant an extension, then the applicant will realize that we don't have another meeting until he has a deemed approval. And I doubt the extension will be forthcoming. Mr. Cobb, you got a comment? Yes, um, respectfully, Mr. Wilson, I, I disagree with you um, strongly. Um, number one, that the applicant has been um, working with, with this board and with the township as a whole um, on this project from the beginning, uh, incorporating our engineer and, and our feedback from day one. And I, and I, and I frankly wanna commend him for, for that process as well. Um, but as we discussed on Monday, we're going from a site that currently has almost no permeable surface. He's reducing that. He's greatly increasing the drainage uh, going off the site by connecting it to uh, the existing storm line as it doesn't exist now, improving that process. Uh, with the filtration system as they reviewed on Monday night. Um, doing that all, not, not, there's nothing that they have to do. So because they are reducing the coverage on this lot, they, they don't have to do any of this, but they're doing it for the betterment of the site and their investment in that community and, 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 and these projects. Um, so I do think that it does significantly increase uh, water management on that, that parcel. Um, and I just think that the, really they have, the developer has been working with this body uh, from the beginning of this process uh, by meeting with us on a pretty regular basis, trying to get our feedback. Um, and so to kind of 
throw this out at the last minute just doesn't seem fair. Well, very honestly, I understand your comments, but I don't, I don't recall us being asked to review this plan in any great detail prior to the request for the uh, approval that's on the agenda tonight. Well, we have a plan. When, when, when did we have, when did we have robust discussion about this, this plan at, at the board level? Well, I would respectfully suggest that this is why we have a planning commission. This is what they did for two and a half hours one evening. And if you want to attend that meeting and listen to what they have to say, more power to you, but you didn't, so. Well, well okay. Uh, I also got the distinct impression from the engineer that this, this <laughs> that, the, that the improvements that they were talking about making on this site uh, were very fluid. And nothing was really uh, buttoned down. And we really, you know, we're, we're relying on their, their good faith to, to do anything at this point in time, especially if we pass this resolution. In my impression from that same discussion with the engineer, they were doing the best with a difficult situation on this lot because um, the storm line that was put in place in the 1940s, which is this board and this township's responsibility, uh, was done so at a very low two and a half feet. Uh, and it's a smaller pipe than maybe what we, would be preferable at this point in time, but they're doing the best they can with the situation that they have on that lot. Um, but my impression was that the engineer was, was very supportive of it. Again, that, that begs a question to the extent that, so what we're doing here is we're re, reapproving a plan that was engineered, designed, and implemented in the 40s for to try and address a stormwater, uh, a stormwater concern or issue uh, in the, you know, 2020. So, uh, you know, again, I, I think it's uh, it, it's too little, but it also might be too late. But uh, I I wanted to just you know raise my objections publicly to the to the uh, plan. But I, I, so let me ask you a question. My the implication of what you're saying is that you would delay this development and down the line to allow for this development or any other development, we, the township should go out beyond, you know, the parameters of, the, of this development and rip up all the storm lines and fix them. Is that what you're suggesting at our, on our nickel? Is that well, I, 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 I'm not suggesting anything uh, that, that might be part of the solution to our constant, you know, water problems in Springfield that we have to, we, we have to address you know the the larger problem within the within the township. So uh, to answer your question, yeah, I agree with that statement. I just want to reflect back on Monday. We asked the township engineer uh, that there was a twenty percent, some sort of twenty percent reduction that is typically standard, but uh, much to Commissioner Cobb's statement that it seemed like he was supportive of the less than twenty percent and supportive of the relationship that they would create with a difficult situation to, to do stormwater management. Am I misremembering that? I, I felt like this township manager, or the township engineer was supportive of this and therefore we would be supportive. At least well, I, would I, I think I think it, as uh, under the, the broad category of best practices today uh, on sites like this, the engineering ideally would provide for an additional 20% of stormwater retention uh, uh, on the site. Uh, and and he, he gave me the clear impression that it didn't, it doesn't. That he's, they're gonna try and do something, but what that something is, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're confusing what the obligation of the developer is versus what Tim, our engineer, asked him to try and accomplish. Right. Correct. And the, the design engineer said, I'm unable to hit the 20% threshold you're asking me to hit, mm -hmm. nor am I obligated, but I'm willing to work with you to come up with some kind of a reduction. I don't know what that is yet. We're going to have to put our heads together to, to come up with that solution. And that's what Tim referred to on Monday yeah, night. I, I guess that's part of my, my concern or my problem. You know, I, I think we should have that ideally buttoned down before we pass this resolution. Well, with all due respect, Commissioner Wilson, yeah. um, you, this board routinely defers to the professionals to work out those details as a condition of approval. 
in a form that's satisfactory to, right. to either the solicitor or the engineer. So to be clear, part of part of passing this is that contingency Correct. that the developer and the engineer have a meeting of the minds that's acceptable to the engineer. Sure. So pl prior to plan recording and the final plan getting but as recorded, we sit here tonight, we don't know what that's going to be. What what form that will take? You're absolutely correct. And he may he may decide that uh, the installation of one fifty five gallon, you know, storm storm barrel is uh, going to be adequate. We have no idea. Well, that's Tim true. Tim could not. That's, yeah, that's true. Could, but if it's in excess of our requirements, then he did something he didn't have to do. What you're concerned about, we can do, Pete, in terms of looking at our ordinances but right now the gentleman has complied with our ordinances has agreed to a condition that he's got to talk to him about doing more than our ordinances albeit we don't know what that is mm -hmm. um and we're up against the 90 days so uh I, I think it's it's problematic to hold him up for more than the ordinance requires at this point Any other comments, questions? I mean, we talk about stormwater all the time, right? We, a lot of our complaints that we get are stormwater. Stormwater is a huge issue. So um, I don't begrudge anyone, you know, having extra caution on that. Um, I do think the, the merits of the case here are, um, you know, favorable as we, you know, talked at length Monday night. Um, so that's my position on it. And I do have confidence that our engineer uh, who has the final say in terms of it being good enough in terms of mm -hmm. recording that plan. Any other comments? All right, we have a motion. We have a second. So all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. Please record a 4-1 vote uh, in favor of the resolution. Okay, and now I'll move on to Mr. Maxwell's report. Um, let's see. So on this concerns the Burton Road flood mitigation project. On January 5th, 2023, Springfield Township received bids for the Burton Road flood mitigation project. Bids for the base project and two alternates were received from B. Blair Corporation of Ivyland, PA, and Shearson or Sheeran Environmental Inc. of Plymouth Meeting, PA. The base bid includes the construction of a new stormwater detention basin and associated improvements on the grounds of the Sandy Run Country Club, as well as the construction of an overflow relief swale between the homes located at 405 and 407 Burton Road, Orland. The two bid, bid alternates solicited pricing to perform additional work that was requested by the, the Country Club, but will not be exercised. While the project will take place on land owned by the Country Club, the project will benefit the properties located in the 400 block of Burton Road that experienced flood damages during heavy rainfall events. Therefore, I move the Board of Commissioners award a contract to Sheeran Environmental Inc. for their low bid for the base project only in the amount of $173,254.05. And that is my motion. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? A uh, quick comment. Um, again, I just wanted, uh, this has been a, a long process as, as we've sort of negotiated with the neighbors, with the country club, um, trying to get all the affected parties uh, involved um, in agreement um, and between our township management, the engineer, um, and you know, all those neighbors, uh, everyone really, their, their efforts have been uh, Herculean and greatly appreciated, uh, particularly thanks to the neighbors who's uh, yards are going to be affected briefly as the construction is done, uh, and also a, a very public appreciation to the Country Club of Sandy Run, who's been uh, a very good partner in this process, um, as they have sort of opened up their their country their their course um, to our going in there with some uh, trucks and digging it out and basically expanding the existing water retention basin by threefold. Um, so it will definitely dramatically impact uh, and benefit all of the surrounding neighbors who have had a lot of water in their yards uh, in very heavy storms. But I think as we'll appreciate um, as we talk more and more about stormwater management and maybe even um, in that upcoming seminar, 
because it retains it on the country club course uh, and doesn't allow it all to kind of flood into our system, we'll all see a great impact from it. So um, projects like these really do uh, greatly benefit the township as a whole. So uh, again, thank you for everybody for their efforts for this. Great, thank you. Okay, so moving on to- Hang on, we got a vote. I'm sorry, oh, we haven't taken that. Any other comments or questions? Okay, sorry about that. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a five zero vote. All right. All right. So next uh, concerns the sale of used equipment. Section 1501.2 of the Pennsylvania First Class Township Code sets forth the regulations for the sale of township personal property via electronic auction. The Springfield Township Fleet Supervisor has requested permission to sell one used vehicle and one used piece of equipment via electronic auction. Therefore, I move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the sale of the following vehicle and equipment via the Municipid online public auction site. They are a 2008 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 pickup truck, which has 133,215 miles and 4,014 hours on it. And second, a, secondly, an Ingersoll Rand stationary air compressor. Uh, let's see, and that is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a 5 0 vote. Okay. And then finally, uh, this concerns the Montcote 2040 grant program, resolution number 1597. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1597, a resolution authorizing application to the 2023 Monco 2040 implementation grant program for the acquisition of 2.759 acres of open space on Hawes Lane, Erdenheim, and the purchase of up to four stormwater easements in the 300 block of Integrity Avenue, Orland. The Monco 2040 program supports local projects that advance the goals of the Montgomery County Comprehensive Plan and the plan's efforts to connect communities, support sustainable places, and a vibrant economy. And that is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a 5 0 vote. Okay. And that completes my report for this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Standish, for your several items presented this evening. We will move on to the Chairman of the Environmental Resources Committee, Commissioner Wilson. Thank you, Mr. President. I have uh, two reports and uh, two resolutions tonight. Starting out with the recycling report, I'm pleased to announce that during the month of January 2023, Springfield Township residents recycled 173.4 tons of material with a householder participation rate of 67.6%. The net costs uh, for the month uh, was 27200 $179.60. Uh, additionally, I'd, the Board of Commissioners would like to remind residents that uh, household refuge and recycling containers uh, may not be larger than 32 gallons in size or 50 pounds in weight when full. Oversized and overweight containers present a hazard to employees and increase the risk of injury. The long-standing regulations were developed by the Director of Risk Control for the Township's insurance carriers to reduce injuries and associated workers' compensation claims. Township residents may purchase appropriately sized refuge and or recycling containers at any hardware or home improvement store or at online retailers. Recycling containers are also available for purchase at the Township Administration Building at a cost of $25 each between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, my first resolution uh, is number 1595, Wissahickon Clean Water Partnership. Stringfield Township, along with all other municipalities located 
in the Wissahickon Creek watershed is mandated by the Environmental Protection Agency to perform water quality improvement activities that are intended to reduce phosphorus and sediment within the watershed. In 2018, the 13 municipalities and four wastewater treatment operators located in the watershed formed a coalition via an intergovernmental agreement to develop an alternative to the EPA's phosphorus-based total maximum daily load plan to improve the water quality within the watershed. The original agreement expired March the 31st, 2021, and was extended through December of 2022. The Board of Commissioners wish to continue participating in the Clean Water Partnership as a means of achieving a more cost-effective and holistic approach to satisfying the EPA's mandates. Therefore, I move the Board of Commissioners adopt Resolution 1595 as a resolution authorizing the appropriate township officials to, ex to execute an extension to the intergovernmental agreement to, to complete a water quality improvement plan as an alternative to the EPA's phosphorus-based total maximum daily load plan for the Wissahickon Creek watershed. The new agreement shall expire December 31st, 2023, or 90 days following the final approval of the Wissahickon Water Quality Improvement Plan, whichever occurs uh, last. That is my motion. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? I think you answered them all, Peter. Good job. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Please record a 5-0 vote. Okay, my second resolution, Mr. President, is 1596. Uh, uh, spring <clears throat> in 2017, Springfield Township joined dozens of other municipalities as a member of Birdtown USA. Birdtown USA was a partnership between the Audubon Society of Pennsylvania and the participating municipalities. In 2021, the Audubon Society of Pennsylvania merged with the Audubon Society of Maryland and DC and was, and was renamed Audubon Mid-Atlantic Audubon Mid-Atlantic, was renamed Audubon Mid-Atlantic. Audubon Mid-Atlantic subsequently discontinued the Birdtown USA program. However, with the permission of the Audubon Mid-Atlantic, a group of volunteers and avian uh, uh, advocates have formed a new organization called Birdtown Pennsylvania that will continue the original mi mission of Birdtown USA to create a healthier and sustainable environment for birds, wildlife, and humans. Therefore, I move the Board of Commissioners adopt Resolution 1596, a resolution authorizing participation in the new Birdtown Pennsylvania program. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Go birds. Right? <laughs> yeah, go birds. Go birds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, birds yeah. Very good. Yes. yes. <laughs> All in favor, <laughs> please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a 5 0 vote. Okay. Go birds. And my last uh, notice here, Mr. President, is the stormwater management workshop. Very appropriate. Uh, the Board of Commissioners is pleased to announce that it will be hosting a stormwater management workshop on Saturday morning, February 25, 2023, from 9 to noon at the Springfield Township building. As part of the workshop, residents will hear about the history of stormwater management, basic stormwater technologies, the creation, the collection, conveyance, and treatment of stormwater, and steps that individual property owners may take to manage stormwater at their homes or businesses to improve water quality and prevent water damage. Anyone interested in attending the workshop is encouraged to visit our website, www.springfieldmonco.org 
uh, backslash education to learn more about and to register to attend. And that was advertised already on the website, correct? That's correct. Great. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. You can find, there now. find more details there. And I believe the, the first two people that come wearing green will get Super Bowl tickets. Yeah, yeah, right. yes, that's right. Yes, you're buying. <laughs> well, the Super Bowl will be over at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I just want to get to watch the replay. <laughs> the new normal. There you go. I just want years. to add for um, any residents clarity that it's you know not just a history lesson. I think like we alluded to earlier, mm -hmm. we do receive a lot of inquiries about stormwater, and so after the history lesson, the, the real crux that's valuable to uh, folks is understanding what items are under the township's responsibilities, what items are wholly a resident's responsibility, and what items might be those gray areas in between where you're really not sure, is this something you should email us about? And I'm hopeful that this presentation will help provide some clarity for residents, um, and frankly myself, so that we can better serve you all in that arena. So I'm looking forward to it and possibly getting a Super Bowl ticket, or not a yeah. ticket t-shirt. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Commissioner Retzvang. All right. Uh, we will thank you, Commissioner Wilson. We will now go to the chairman of the Administrative Fiscal Affairs and Zoning Committee, Commissioner Cobb. Thank you. Um, first up, regarding the uh, bill listing, I move the Board of Commissioners approve the January check reconciliation in the amount of $704,000. $347.31 and the February bill listing in the amount of $619,241.10. That's my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a 5 0 vote. Next, uh, regarding this month's uh, zoning hearing board, uh, the Springfield Town Township Zoning Hearing Board will meet on Monday, February 27th at 7 p.m. Uh, in this building, where they will hear the following three applications. Uh, the first is from uh, the application of, Mary, of Ms. Mary O. Whitman, <laughs> owner of property located at 401 Station Avenue in Glenside. The applicant is seeking a variance uh, requesting the approval for the installation of a six foot high aluminum spaced picket fence along a portion of the front property line adjoining, adjoining South Fairway Road. Six foot high fencing is required to maintain a 15 foot setback from the front property line. This property is zoned within the A residential district of Ward 7. Uh, they will also hear the application of Miss Megan Fitzpatrick, owner of the property located at 800 Winmore Avenue in Winmore. The applicant is seeking a variance uh, seeking approval to demolish the existing garage on the property and construct a new single family dwelling. The variance is required due to the fact that the lot is 4,125 square feet in total lot area and is required to be a minimum of 4,500 square feet. The property is zoned with, within the D residential district of ward number five. And finally, the application of Mr. Keith Gambler, Gamber, uh, owner of a property located at 1209 Wedgwood Road in Flowertown. This applicant is seeking a variance uh, requesting approval to construct an accessory building that is 15 feet, three inches in height instead of the 12 foot height limitation of the zoning ordinance. That property is zoned within the A residential district of Ward 1. Copies of each of these applications are available for review in the community development office during normal business hours at the township building. And again, those applications will be heard on Monday, February 27th at 7 p.m. in this room. That's my report. Thank you, Commissioner Cobb. And we will go to Commissioner Ratzavang, Chairman of the Parks and Recreational Resources Committee. I have one announcement today. This is the announcement uh, of a vacancy. Uh, at the recommendation of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, the Board of Commissioners is pleased to announce the creation of a non-voting student representative to serve as a member of the Parks and Recreation and Recreation Center Advisory Committee. So that's two vacancies. Uh, the purpose of adding a student representative to the committees is to offer a youth perspective to new and existing programs and recreational needs. Interested candidates must be a resident of Springfield Township and shall be enrolled as a junior or senior in one of the secondary schools located in Springfield uh, Township. 
Candidates shall send a letter of interest to the attention of Mr. Michael Taylor, Township Manager, 1510 Paper Mill Road, Winmore, PA, or via email mtaylor at springfieldmonco.org. I have my own thing. It, they don't have to attend a, a school in the town, right? As long as they're a resident, is that is that the, the intent? They need to be a resident, and I thought it was the intention that they uh, be registered at one of the schools in town. Okay. I mean, I'm open either way. You were at the meeting, yeah. No, no, I, I thought the intention was uh, that they could just be uh, a resident, and if they were attending, let's say, I don't know, uh, SCH or, or what have you, they, as long as they're a resident, they'd be welcome to to uh, apply. Well, if, if that's what the board would, would like, that's fine. I mean, I, I don't, that's... I mean, I wouldn't limit it. I mean, if someone's a resident, they're a resident. Yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll see what you get back in, and then... Sure, yeah, and I just encourage any student, um, no matter what your grades or background, if you have an interest in parks and recreation, please, please do apply. I want to be as inclusive, inclusive as possible of everyone's perspective. So very excited to invite folks to apply. Great. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Retzelov. This time, the board is now open again to receiving public comment. Good evening, everyone. Let me just pull up my notes here. Um, I also sent uh, this as a note to the my start, commissioner. Start with your name and address. Oh, please. sorry. No problem. Evan Kleinfelder, 814 East Gravers Lane. Also sent this as a note to the commissioners and to the township manager today. Uh, my name is Evan Kleinfelder. Uh, though my family has a long history within Springfield Township, my wife, son, and I moved back here um, about a year and a half ago from Philadelphia. In the city, we had the opportunity to attend monthly town hall meetings with our local police captain to discuss anything at issue in the neighborhood. I emailed Chief Pitko in December 2022 to ask if Spring Springfield Township PD held any such meetings, and I was surprised to learn that they did not. I was told, quote, no, unlike the city of Philadelphia, many police departments in Montgomery County, including Springfield Township, do not typically hold monthly community meetings. Um, however, he did also state that, quote, we will likely host a coffee with a cop event in the near future, another avenue where residents have the opportunity to meet our officers and discuss issues, end quote. We also heard Officer Robert Bayada at the January 11th, 2023 Board of Commissioners meeting make a commitment to resurrect the coffee with a cop events. However, he has since become a plaintiff in a lawsuit against our township, so I don't know if the dynamic has changed there. <clears throat> I also checked the township website and STPD Facebook page today for any information on community meetings, and I didn't see anything. I did notice that the township website says, officers participating in the Welcome Wagon program visit every new homeowner in Springfield Township shortly after the resident moves in. The officer provides a comprehensive package of information regarding various township and police services available to them. I can confirm that no officer had has ever visited my home as part of that program. Um, so lastly, um, I, I'll be brief here. <laughs> I emailed Chief Pitco today, again, to follow up. I haven't heard anything back. Um, but in the ensuing couple of months since I had originally emailed him, I, I haven't been aware of any community meetings being set up. Um, I believe it's in the best interest um, and the best way we, way we can have a secure community is if we're able to partner with our police department to build bonds of trust and familiarity, especially at this time of heightened emotions. I know neighboring townships, including Abington and Cheltenham, have regular consistent community outreach by their police departments. I will continue to seek this in coordination with other Springfield Township residents, but also aim, I'm coming to the Board of Commissioners today as you are the elected body who oversees all township employees. Um, so my open question, and I don't need a response immediately, but this is something I just would hope that you would think about, is do you support the goal of having more opportunities for our township residents to dialogue with officers? And if so, how can we ensure that we can turn the promises made um, into true commitments with actual dates, times, and venues attached? Thank you. Great. Thank you. Oh, 
Hello, my name is Terry Cohen Johnson. I live at 219 Roche Avenue in Orland. Now, more than ever, the Springfield Township Police Department needs to demonstrate their willingness to implement community policing. One step in this process would be to set up regular meetings with community members. During those meetings, police officers could share their experiences so citizens could gain a better knowledge of what they go through on a daily basis. It would also be an opportunity for citizens to share their experiences, enabling both groups to learn from each other and develop a sense of empathy, which would benefit both groups. Just as this is a priority for Abington's police chief and department, so should it be for Springfield. No need for Springfield to reinvent the wheel. They could just look at the model Abington has created. They hold regular coffee with the cop meetings held in a community church. The police chief issued a strong letter to the community after the murder of Tyree Nichols about the importance of community policing and their Facebook page consists of posts with photos of the police engaged in activities with the community. We can do two things at once, continue to demonstrate our respect and gratitude to our police officers while working toward greater trust between the groups between the police and all township citizens. We need to start to listen to each other and try to imagine what it's like to walk in each other's shoes. I request that the Board of Commissioners work toward ensuring that Springfield Township Police Department truly demonstrates what community policing means. All parties will benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening, Angelina Banks, Queen Street, Winmore. Um, so it was my understanding that last week, this body and the, um, regarding the litigation with the PBA, you guys have reached a temporary injunction. Just like to go on record and requesting formally that this body rescind resolution 1592, put an end to the wasting of the taxpayer money and uh, begin to help restore and strengthen the relationship between this body the community, the police department, and the PBA. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rob Goldberg, uh, 105 Erdenheim Road. Uh, I support the resolution that affirms the township policy prohibiting the so-called thin blue line flag on township vehicles and uniforms. Um, if the January 6, 2021, insurrection had not happened, I would not have been aware of this issue as much, but that all changed when uh, violent gangs brandished this actual flag in attacks on police officers and our democracy at the US Capitol. And whatever meaning this flag once had, it changed forever, January 6, 2021. As a patriot, I have to ask what is wrong with just using the one flag we're sp supposed to unite under the American flag makes me uneasy to see people using other forms of the American flag. As a taxpayer, I have to say that it is the PBA, not the township that brought this lawsuit. People who have concerns about the cost of defending the lawsuit should direct their concerns about litigation costs to Chief Pitcow and the members of the PBA. As a voter, I'm very concerned by claims from the Republican party that any Republican election loss is the result of fraud. It worries me that our police in our township use a symbol connected to election deniers. And in fact, the PBA lawsuit itself denies an, a democratic decision made by a majority of you commissioners. And uh, that's the end of my comments, thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? And Mr. President, can I just say one thing? Sure. Just um, all very good comments um, to be fair to the uh, department um, who were in a, a pretty good schedule of, of community uh, meetings prior to the pandemic. Uh, we're in this building. We had uh, open town halls on uh, neighborhood watch. We had open township uh, meetings on um, opioid, uh, combating opioid addiction, just various topics like that. A lot of that did end uh, as a result of the pandemic, um, as did the regular uh, coffee with a cop. Um, and just this year, we managed to um, get back in doing the uh, night out event. Um, and 
um, as the chief and, and I think other leadership in the department have noted, um, they will get back to a regular basis of the, the coffee of the cop. Um, but whenever we talk to a new applicant, the first thing we ask is, is what their thoughts are on community policing. Um, and to, uh, to an individual, they all give very eloquent uh, answers on how important that is. Um, so it means a lot to us, it probably means even more to them at this point, um, given the debate of the last couple of uh, the last year or so. Um, but great points. Um, and I think, again, as we kind of evolved out of the pandemic, getting back out and more regular interactions with public, um, hopefully we'll see that, that ramp up more because it is important. Uh, thank you. And just a quick response to that. Perhaps when the meetings do get reestablished, and I hope they do, that in addition to topics, there's time spent on dialogue. That it's not a topic where the police just present something, that it is an opportunity, as I said before, for the police to share their experiences, for citizens to share their concerns, their life experiences, and to get to know each other and to create some trust and understanding because I think we desperately need it now. Thank you. All right, at this time, I would accept a motion to adjourn the meeting. May I just quickly uh, just add two things? You may. Which is, um, I just would not really to the comments that were made. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, I just wanted to highlight the diversity of experiences in our township. A happy Lunar New Year to all those who celebrated this past month, and also urging all to celebrate uh, Black Voices and Black History Month this month. I just really enjoy and appreciate the opportunity to share diversity of experiences in, in every avenue that we can. I think it makes us a better township uh, for all of us to uh, make those considerations. So that, that is all, and I would motion to adjourn thereafter. Great. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments on the adjournment motion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a 5 0 vote. And that's the news, and I am out of here. Thank you for coming.